Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about in a while that nobody's really talking about. The uh, Galactic Star Cruiser at Walt Disney World. Uh-huh. But there's a reason. There's a reason for this. Uh, there's something going on. The bookings are not great. We've nope. talked about that before. A couple of months ago, they were actually advertising for more cast members. And it seems like they're having some dates uh, that they're going to be closed this year. But really what we want to talk about is a cast member uh, from this experience uh, saying some pretty interesting things on TikTok, uh, thanking mm. people. Uh, he, I guess he quit. Uh, he quit. I don't know if he quit or got gone or what. But... I don't know. Something's up. And Because he said later in the video, like, oh, don't worry about me. I have lots of things lined up. So it sounds that I can't tell if it's like he's gone because he chose it. Are gone because you know he didn't. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Um, something something's up with this. Now I gotta wonder. We actually did uh, you know a, a podcast episode the other day, and we talked about the possibility of them retheming the Galactic Star Cruiser or changing the way we're doing that they the one it. day or something. Doing the one day, it. turning it into like a dinner theater or something. But there there definitely are some changes. I think going on with it, uh, we'll talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, over uh, 284,000 subs. Yeah. Thank you so much for the support. We have been talking about the Galactic Star Cruiser. Again, this is one of those experiences that I, I was really shocked Disney moved forward with it mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Because I'm like, this, this is a luxury item. This is not something that most people are going to be able to afford it's we said before it's going to be a one and done for most yeah, people yeah it was going to be really busy at the beginning and then it was probably going to fall, go off a cliff and that's exactly what happened uh that is exactly where we're at with it right now because if you go out to the bookings yeah uh, the booking now dates, of course it's, it's not... showing the six as being because they they have the cruise then so it, it's it's our listed as being unavailable doesn't mean it was sold out now they have dates like in february and there's some dates in may some of these dates have been on the calendar since they released the calendar for 2023. And now it could be like a cast member day. It could be like there's a refurb thing going on or like some kind of like, you know, refresh. It could even be like there's dates are booked up for travel agent events. Yeah. Because they do all those things. So um, I don't necessarily think those are sold out dates because some of them were on the calendar as soon as it list it, it, it like launched. Yeah, but I mean, we're, we're getting into summer here and very few dates are available. Or, well, or they're so out. desperate for yeah. They're going, giving $750 dining cards out. I mean, I don't think summer's looking too hot. No. No pun and intended. <laughs> it's probably going to be very hot this uh -huh. summer. But uh, yeah, so something is up with this. And then this coupled with uh, what this guy is saying on TikTok. Now, he is a cast member. He's done videos. I think he's the one before who was joking. Uh, he did the video talking about, you'll be back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so, it, you know, it could be. That is, we know who you are. <laughs> maybe maybe he's getting gone because Disney doesn't like to be dunked on on TikTok, or maybe, you know, I don't think so. something his, his else. His attitude kind of... was actually really good. I mean, I don't think anything he said was, was bad. But some things he said were interestedly worded. Now, it could mean nothing. It could just mean, you know, oh, they're it, it's all about be, they're being recast. Maybe they're trying to cast cheaper actors. You know, Disney was advertising for people the other day. I know their hours are getting cut. People might be quitting because of that. I don't know, but I can tell you what he said. Yeah, so let's, you transcribed it. Let's, let's talk about this. his video. Yeah, but we don't I, want to snipe his video. I so. do want to say, his, he was very positive and his attitude was very good. So I want to make sure that's very clear. I don't want to think he was being a, you know, a dick or a jerk or anything like that because he wasn't. I would have been a Not dick. Not this time. <laughs> if it is the same person as you'll be back. I'll, I, I, um, I would have been a dick and a jerk yeah, you simultaneously. Would have but then yes. you might have contracts that don't allow you to be a dick and a jerk for a couple of years. That's true. Okay, one thing he brought up, and I and I do think this this is something you don't think about, but it would be hard. He said for the actors, it's a 48-hour show on stage and off stage. So, like, you're doing this and you're this character for 48 hours on these trips. So even when you're, like, in, you know, going to bed and you're, like, you have to remember everything that happened that day, probably someone take notes or whatever, because you have to remember the people for the next day to interact with them again. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do it. I'd just be like, hey, you. Why are you spending this money, you moron? Anyway, so they, he, said, he said about that, and that's a very valid point. And he said, no one tells them anything through earpieces. It's all them just remembering things. But um, some of the things he said, they try to give the best Star Wars experience they can because people paid $6,000 for two days. So they're trying to do their job and do it well because yeah. they want to do the best they can because they know people pay a lot of money and not necessarily for the company so much as it was for those people. Okay. And then he says, uh, because at the end of the day, we're the ones on the front lines. <laughs> then he says, well, should we carry that responsibility? Probably not. 
And I will say that cast members get all the shit. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they're the ones that have to deal with management's poor decisions. And, uh, you know, at Disney, it's worse than retail in a lot of cases because people are paying more. They're expecting more. They're tired. They're cranky. They're, you know, whatever. Well, yeah. And, um, and these people, like, sit up in their ivory towers. And then it is like a military. And then, like, you know, sending out the, the you know, disposable people to the front line to take all the shit while they make all the plans. And then when, and then when people complain, they have a line of phone operators to take the calls or, you know, customer service representatives at the parks to deal with their shit. And they never have to hear about it until, you know, they're being ousted in the middle of, you know, Sunday. An Elton John concert. Uh, yeah, before an Elton John concert. I mean, they don't actually, you know, they, they put themselves in, in on a pedestal and then let everybody else take all the hits for their bad choices. Yeah. That is true. We've mentioned that many times. And that might be why, one of the reasons why cast members are getting kind of not as nice as they used to be because they're probably tired of dealing with people's shit because they're mad about Disney shrinking food sizes or raising prices again or something else. It's not their fault. No. Nope. Point that out. Not their fault. They're doing the best they can do. Um, okay, they said, but more than anything, the most real thing on that ship is the Halcyon crew and the family we made. We built this show in the middle of a pandemic and we helped create something that had literally never been done before. Dot, dot, dot talks about how they built it. My Halcyon crew, you are why the ship is so special. You continue to go above and beyond when no one asks you to. You are the true success of the ship. No matter what happens, no one can take that away from you. And I dare them to try. Mm. You are the true success of the ship. You mean when you're comparing success to actually bookings? Yeah, something's up. That's a really weird thing to say. To, like, it's like they're going to take you're it. The, what, you're what makes it successful. So going back to a couple of months ago, they were looking for actors. And we thought that was kind of weird. And I'm like, are they, are they blaming the cast members for the failure of the Galactic Star Or are they Cruiser. just saying it's not doing well and, you know, it's, it's unsuccessful. And the actors are like, well, you know, they don't want to hear it's unsuccessful because to them they did what they could do. But financially it's not successful. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when Bob Iger comes in. And well, it was his baby. It was his idea. Yeah, and it... If it were done correctly, I'm not talking about the... Ca I mean, it's not... I'm not talking about the cast members and how hard they work. Right? If you ask someone, any random person on the street... Would you go to a Star Wars, interactive Star Wars LARPing hotel? That'd be awesome. I can't wait to meet Darth Vader in person. You know what? Here's the thing, though. <laughs> that's true. But here's the thing. I think even that's limited. Yeah. Yeah. At the price point it is, it's limited. The price point is. You'd yeah. get a lot more people there if you make it a day thing, you know. And they might be. I mean, originally, you know, they were talking about uh, Galaxy's Edge when it was going to be the original trilogy and they had some other ideas, but they were going to do like a dinner theater with aliens. And it was a lot more elaborate than what they wound up doing with the Galactic Star Cruiser. And that's the thing that blows my mind is like they're still charging a premium price for what looks like a very budget cut version of what they had originally intended. I remember when we saw the original pictures and they had the we were talking about it from we had the, the D23 book and we were looking at it. And they were talking about the open or the atrium. You're like, it's Florida. It's, oh, it's, a, it's like, you know, a tropical. It's Florida. It's, it's Florida. literally an atrium with juggling rocks. Yeah. $6,000. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's nothing mean, against the cast members. I'm not saying this against them. It's just a really not well thought out idea for the price point. Yeah. I, and, and that's that's you get, it. You it, get to ride around in an AT-AT? -AT? I'll pay that. That would be amazing. Even if you could, like, even if it was like a ride simulator that you were in it, and you got to ride and ride simulator for like five or ten minutes in AT AT and Hoth. I'd pay six thousand dollars to stay there, stay there two days to go ride in an AT AT or oh different different vehicles instead of the bridge experience. That would have been awesome to actually be on an Imperial Star Cruiser and get to be an Imperial Stormtrooper or something, or uh, you know, and like you're training, and then you're like, hey, those rebels down there, yeah, go step on them. No, they don't want you to step on people. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You know, I'd, I'd I just, pay for that. I would. You know, too bad they couldn't do something where you were actually, okay, you're going to go to Galaxy's Edge. So you go to Galaxy's Edge to get into Rise of the Resistance because you get to ride in the AT-AT -AT cockpit and, and blaster the people as they come through. That So there are so many things that they could have done. And a lot of the immersion with the Galactic Star Cruiser, again, it's, it's disappointing because they promised immersion for everybody and then they paywalled it and then what they paywalled was a fraction of what was 
supposed to be and available for massively up everybody. Charged. Then they upcharged it, and it, it's way more expensive. People laugh. They're like, "Oh, this thing's gonna be five or six thousand dollars." Ha 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 ha! No, it's not. It's gonna be. It's we were gonna, hearing like a thousand, a thousand or two thousand dollars a day per, or a thousand dollars per person per day is what we were hearing. Originally. Yeah, they were originally saying like thirty five hundred. People were like, "Oh my god, that's insane!" And that wound up being almost twice. Yeah, that. it was. It was forty forty eight hundred to six thousand yeah, starting yeah. price. Starting without any add-ons, without that's the basic rooms. So he also went on to say um, to my fellow actors, this is this, listen to this. This is where it sounds really like you know, hey everybody, I'm clean. Everybody, you did a good job. Go you. So I'm kind of like, what are they doing? Is something going on? Something's going on. To my fellow actors, to the passengers, to passenger services, to our tech team, to costuming and cosmetology, to the characters and their captains, to the creative team, management, and the Imagineers. I'll leave you with this. For the order, ignite the spark. And then he's like, focus on the things that you can trust instead of the things you can't. Something, That's weird. Something's going on. He knows something or they know something or I, I don't know. And, and you know, just looking. Why would you tell every single team on the ship, you know, you know, for the order? Like, it sounds very. Final. Yes. I mean, that might not be what's going on. When a Maybe show. Maybe it's because it's from his point of view, but. I, you know, you, usually if you get gone from something, it's kind of like, you know, oh, hey, guys, you know, good luck to you. It's going to be it's going to be great. I, I hope you guys will have, you know, fantastic uh, voyage going forward. I'm moving on to other things, whatever. This sounds very fun. This is like when they cancel a TV show and people start tweeting about the cancellations. No, I want to make it clear that they haven't actually canceled anything or said put it publicly that they were canceling anything or that none of that has come out yet. Um, this it's could just be this is one person's experience, but there are some qu things there that make me wonder if, you know, are they blaming the cast members for the, that's not being successful, you know, are they, you know, what are they, are they measuring success by something other than their own failure? You know, it's things like that and trying to pin on other people. Cause they're like, no one told you to do that. But you go above and beyond. You I, are successful. You know, they don't tell you you are kind of thing. And then, you know, that coupled with. The lack of bookings coupled with them hiring new entertainers. They put a discount for DVC people. That's the only discount you can get. It was like 30% off. Yeah, there's, look, this thing is in trouble. This is in big trouble. And I guarantee you that they're probably hearing about it. But, you know, I don't blame the cast members at all. It's The whole thing was, it was a good idea poorly, poorly, poorly executed by Disney, mm -hmm. by the higher-ups. It could have been phenomenal. It could have been a slam dunk if it were cheaper, if it were based on the original trilogy and didn't look like Star Trek. You know, people were laughing at this thing right out of the gate. And it, you know, it's it's not going to last. There's no way this this is sustainable. No. Especially now. You know, Disney's pinching pennies right now. I mean, they're they're hurting. It's, it's <laughs> I very... say pinching loaves. Well, they're doing that, too. You know, but it's just like, I mean, this thing is not sustainable long term. Any Anybody can look at this. I don't care how much pixie dust you're inhaling. This thing is a failure. It's a failure. It it, it had exactly as we said it was going to do. It was the first couple of months, it was going to be fantastic. And then it got a reputation for being underwhelming and overpriced. Well, I think that, too, you also had the people, the, all the people that were willing to pay that, that were willing. It's not so many people are going to go to multiple times. I mean, some no. people do, but most people don't. No. All the people that were willing to pay that, all the people that were willing to go for, you know, this version of Star Wars, for this version of immersion, for that price point, all went and yeah. then it was like, yeah, I did it once. Why, why go back? I mean, it'd be worth it if it was a different adventure every time mm -hmm. you went back. Um, you know, and I guess I, like, there are some, I mean, they even had the people that worked on it. Remember that it was last March or something like that. They were at an event and they were talking about, oh, how it's repeat, the repeatability. Cause yeah. you can pick being a different, you can pick, you know, being for the first order or for the, um, what do they call them now? The, the, resistance. the resistance. The resistance. And then it was like you could be, you could, you could choose your side, so you can go back and have a different experience. Yeek. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's mostly the same stuff. The schedules are mostly the same. It's just you might get a little different interaction. Not, it's not a vastly enough difference to warrant the price tag again. Then they thought, well, maybe they'll offer some holiday things like Life Day or something yeah, for Halloween cool. or something like that to get like they do on the cruise ships to get people in the door. No, they didn't even do that. That costs money. We can't do that. Then they raised the, the, the photo pro package prices yeah. and the face painting package prices and they raised all those up a lot. It's just it's just stupid. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Th this is coming from Inside the Magic, which, which used to be one of the most magical websites on the internet, but now they're they're actually a hundred times worse than I we are. I thought you were going to say you used to be one of the biggest Disney ass kissers on the internet. They were. But. They were. So they said the two sold out dates in February are the 18th and the 19th, with two newer sold out dates being August 19th 
through 20. Some people think it's just a, being shut down for whatever reason. They said it's important to note. I noticed this. That May the 4th. The, I caught that when they, yes. Yep. The International Day of Celebration for Star Wars fans is available to book as well. Yeah. You would think that'd be the first thing to go. Yes. But some of those dates I want to point out were gone when the calendar first came up. Um, I think that was because they're 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 having some kind of event or something there at the time. Watch us be the next. You know what they're going to do? They're going to close it down. It's going to be like, hey, if you want your Disney magical wedding, you can have your Disney magical mag Disney magical wedding on the Star Cruiser. Oh, I'm sure. And you could have you could rent it out for your for your event. No, I, I can almost guarantee you they were going to do that. I mean, I don't know if if you know people listening to this video realize, but Disney does rent out attractions for yes. events. I mean, it's expensive. It starts at like 20,000 some dollars just, you know, for a couple hours, but they will close down parts of the park or certain attractions to rent them out. Uh, in Hollywood studios, they do it in uh, toy story land. They do it at Indiana Jones. Um, they used to do it at uh, Ellen's energy adventure before it was. <laughs> yeah. You know. That'd be cool to walk the dinos though. Yeah, you could. Freaky. Like, it, it, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you get to see some of the stuff up close, but yeah, you, they can rent it out and I could totally see them doing that being like, Hey, you want to have a really unique corporate hoedown? Let's g use a Galactic Star Cruiser because God knows we're not making money mm -hmm. anyway else. Anyway else, you know. So we'll, we'll charge a company, you know, hundred thousand dollars to have an event here. Sure, sure. Why not? And they could just use the rooms for like something else, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, escape rooms. <laughs> Oh, that, they could do that. They could do that. That's the Galactic escape. Star Cruiser massage parlor. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> No, but the escape rooms they could do. They could do that. Like, can you escape from the bunker? Like, I could take different no. sections and be like, escape from Hoth, escape from the Death Star, escape from, you know. That would actually be kind of cool. I would I would pay for that. You I know, mean, you know yeah. Unless we had, like, original trilogy. But I, th I think it was just a, was a horrible, a horrible execution of an otherwise good idea. It's just like, I mean, you know, having an immersive Star Wars hotel experience is is on paper a good idea, but it's not actual Star Wars. It's off-brand Disney Star Trek Star Wars, and it's they obviously cut corners on it, and it costs too damn much. And the blue you know? shrimp's creepy looking. The blue shrimp is unappetizing. The food is unappetizing. It looks just like Pandora's food. Like yeah, it, which is also, I mean, as much as you love Pandora, yeah. some of the food looks pretty nasty. Yeah, I'm sure it tastes about as good as the blue milk, too, which is pretty nasty. But Yeah. Uh, so yes. wait, oh, you could, was, wasn't, couldn't you get unlimited blue and green milk? Oh, boy. Yeah. It tastes like cleaning products. <laughs> I'll pay you more to take it away. Anyway, are we going to wrap this up? Uh, we're going to wrap this up. So keep an eye on this. We're going to keep an eye on this. There's yeah. definitely something up. Again, something we don't up. know what's going on. I mean, it could no. just be this person's experience and because they're leaving. Um, don't harass this person or anything like that. I'm sure they'll go around and tell, you know, write us and tell us to take it down <laughs> and say that, hey, you know, um, I, I like you guys. And then tell it publicly, I hate Clownfish TV and, you know. Uh, yeah, it's not like that ever happened to us before. No. Um, so, yeah, but we're going to keep an eye on this, guys. I think changes are coming one way or another. They're going to have to do something because this thing is basically dead on. But I do feel bad for the cast members because I'm sure they worked their asses off to do, yeah, to be in character for like 48 hours, you know, for these these different, you know, tours or whatever. And it, it's got to be exhausting, got to be hard. And I'm not ever saying the cast members didn't give it their all because yeah. I don't think that's the case. I think but some of the the story and what they planned for the Star Cruiser was kind of lame. I mean, let's just be honest. It was lacking. The whole thing is they lame. did the best they could do with what they had to work with. It, and it doesn't even look like it doesn't even look like Star Wars. It looks like Star Trek. Uh -huh. it, it, you know, I mean, so many things went wrong with this. And this is definitely. Don't blame the cast members. And they better not be. We said as soon as they opened this, I said, you know, coming soon to defunct land. You did. I, I said, this is this is absolutely a, an episode of defunct land. Two or three years from now, he's gonna look back and be like, "Yep." You know, they offered something too, like, "Okay, you get to go to the, you get to go to Galaxy's Edge each night of your trip, and you get to go you know, exclusive access after hours for like two hours or something to go ride stuff and go hang out and get pictures or shop." People might be more willing to do it, but yeah. they don't even offer you that. Even if they did that, and okay, fine, you lock down Galaxy's Edge for a couple hours and you bring out because the reason that my understanding is the reason they're not doing the droids and the walk around aliens and stuff like they were planning too on busy. doing, it's too busy. Fine. You only have a handful of people that went on the Star Cruiser. You do Galaxy's Edge at night after hours, and you bring out the aliens and the droids and the and lightsaber And all the things you, you promised that people promised. want to see. They get to go on the Falcon. I mean, there's a special Falcon activity or like tour or something they don't usually people don't get. You offer things like that. They didn't even do that. Like for that price tag, you would think that you're going to get exclusive time at Galaxy's Edge or something. They don't even give you that. But maybe they should consider it. They should. They really have to rethink this. So, so. suddenly they do. <laughs> you can. You know where you got it from.
Yeah. All right. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.